Sebastian Halenke, Roman, Julian P. Blanquet, Stefan Gasolfi, Jakub Schubert, Romain de Grange, Dimitri, Bakvanioff, Adam, Andre, Gatia Super. Sebastian Halenke with the Red Mohawk from Germany. And this is a great opportunity for Sebastian. Sebastian is away. The world number 16. A 39 plus in his semi final, 37 plus in his qualifier, along with a 40. A world youth champion of 2012. The clock is in the top bottom right, I should say, of your screen. Eight minutes each climber will get. And look it on my screen here. And luckily, it will go on the count back. The time won't be needed too much. So, Tommen. Sebastian is underway. How do you approach it you know, when you start a route? Is, you try and use as less energy as possible or, or, or just try and work your way into the route, be patient and just try not to make any mistakes early on? Yeah, I try to be really patient on the start because I know that, uh, I mean, sometimes it happens that the starts are really powerful and bouldery, but I try to, like, keep calm and like uh, reserve all the power for later uh, just I mean if I get some really good holds in the star or something I like to uh, relax a little bit to see the hold before me and think breathe in and then like start uh, start doing my thing so um, <laughs> So 90 seconds down here for Sebastian Hellinger's climb here. He's on a run about route of move 22 right now. Yeah. Going out a little cheat -cheat. So yes, come on. Uh, as I'm watching uh, Sebastian, I would guess that the start of the route is like uh, really, I won't say easy, easy to to the finalists. I would say because uh, uh, he really walked to this point. It's uh, almost half route already. And I guess it's like uh, they, the route setters did an easy start to the route, uh, and then they're gonna do a bouldery part on the end uh, to to make a difference between the climbers. Um, definitely looks this way. But I, as I said, I'm wrong already. I thought it's this is not a rest. This is not a rest for him. Uh, I mean, it is for him. Definitely, it's a rest for him. But uh, I, on observation, I didn't really see the rest. Another crowd are beginning to get involved here. Helenka, who went out onto the Asian Tour last year, and his temperature was through the roof. He was he was quite ill out in Asia. Didn't compete at all. He was in Mokpo, went to Wuj and see if he can get rid of it there. He couldn't do so. He was suffering a temperature around 103 degrees out there. Took, so went straight back home to Germany. He's back to full fitness now, which is great to see. And he's been training hard through the winter and spring. Yeah, he was really unlucky last year, and that's why I'm really happy for him that he made it this this year to the finals. And uh, I hope he shows his best performance now. Three minutes down for Helenka. On to move number 40. This is a good start from the 20 year old German. Yeah, he looks in the zone and uh, it, he looks that he's really enjoying the route and uh, yeah, he's in the flow. In the flow, in the game. Yeah. He's got the swing right now. Middle to 40. But I have to say, I mean, he's the first climber and uh, it's really hard to say from the first climber already. But uh, I'm guessing like the route, it looks just a little bit too easy up to this point. Up to this point. Because I didn't see any moves like that he would like be shaky just a little bit. So I'm thinking like probably the others won't be as well. So it has to be something really hard right now on these pinches. You'd argue it's been problem free up to now. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway, well, there's a lot of time, but this is where you think this is going to be won and lost here. Yeah, I, a few holds that look quite uh, dangerous here. Yeah, I know them from the um, from the qualifiers. We had them, and uh, they're not the best. I wasn't holding them in the last step because it's the least overhanging. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm thinking this is the the part to 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 make the difference. But as I'm watching him, it, this is a really good rest, so it has to be something really hard right now. Because otherwise he'll top the route. Magnificent beer there, Sebastian Halleck on the wall, Mont Blanc in the background. Wonderful part of the world, if you have got the chance to come here, I highly suggest it. 
We've had a fantastic welcome. Climbers, the whole team here. And Hallenke is wants to start this party off with a bang. Long rest here on move 44-45. Yeah, he looks really relaxed. Now left the 46 and he's... This is a good effort, this, from Sebastian Halenka. And all of a sudden, he's really throwing his hat into the ring here. Oh, this is crazy. Wow, Halenka. This is superb. Absolutely. He's at the bottom. Wow. 52 was his score. 52 yeah. moves for Sebastian Halenka. Good Ramon, Julian B. Blanquet. Yeah. Double world champion we got on the wall now. And if anyone who knows how to find the top from the bottom of a jumbo bag, then it's, it's this man here, because he can be a magician at times. Yeah, it's amazing to watch Ramon. Uh, I mean, it's really impressive at his age, that he's still so uh, so into it, into competition. And I, I'm hoping that uh, a lot more climbers will uh, follow his path and stay into the competitions as long as he has. And, of course, so many podiums in his Life. It's just, well, it's just amazing. Well, well you just took it away. For, uh, 16 World Cups to his name, yeah. two World Titles. Didn't have a good season last year, though. Uh, he got so close out there in Gijon. He was what one, two moves away there from defeating Adam Andre. He was, I think, it was one move away. He went for the, yeah, he went for the Dino to yeah. uh, to get the top and and, and just uh, parried it away, as it were. Yeah. And got second place on a home soil and that, that crowd lifted the roof in Gijon. He thought he was going to do it. Second place in Wuzhang last year, but that was it. No other podiums last season. Yeah, bad season for him, but... Uh, uh. I mean, it happens, it's a competition and I, I'm thinking the roots has changed a lot uh, in, the last, in the last two years. They're becoming more and more bouldery and as Ramon is like a really short climber, sometimes I have to say that he has some disadvantages. Um, as he had advantages, a lot more advantages before as he could like... Uh, Oh, 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 hello. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, you see here, he had to like step on the volume because uh, he was like way too short to stand down there. Oh, uh. Uh, that's, that's, I think, what costs Ramon of really good results. He's like way too powerful and he, co he can uh, take so many mistakes. <laughs> But on the end, this costs him uh, the victory or the podium, so... Well, he's won 16 World Cups and two World Titles, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the last year. <laughs> they, I know that the years before, it's, uh, it was his era. Chatting to uh, Tony, his coach, yesterday. He said he'd been training hard on winter and spring. I say Tony's not his coach, he's a, he's been his, his new job title is the chairman of selectors. That's, 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 what he's, that's what he's been known as now. I, I've had on good authority, he, he sat down a pen and paper, I'm now the chairman of selectors, he said. Oh. Yeah, definitely for Ramon it looks a lot harder, some moves where uh, Sebastian just like reached out and it was like Ramon has a lot of a lot more problems, but uh, I'm guessing he will. He has a lot of endurance, and even though he uh, has a hard time, sometimes he will gain the power back. And yeah. 34-35 moves is into about 20 or so to go. Time is well in hand for the world number six, fifth in the overall last season. Made seven out of the nine finals in league competition in 2014. It's actually a lot of rest so in this route. I was totally wrong. I also have to say these are really new goals and None of uh, the climbers know them, maybe just few, so it's hard to say. So then halfway through his lost of time. Yeah, 
It was a rocky start here for, for Ramon Dolman, but he seems to be getting into the into the route and, and he settled down well. Yeah, for sure. But that's like uh, the Ramon, as I know, it's always, mostly always like this. And here we have a good camera, like we can see <laughs> how the holes are. Well, it's fantastic, yeah. fantastic shot from our camera yeah. up, up in the roof. That would be really good if there would be more shots like this. And you, you get to see up, up close there. Yeah, you, you can also see his face, uh, like how he's trying to relax and everything. So wasn't much of a grimace there. Ma. Five minutes down, three to go. As darkness descends here in the Chamonix Valley. Two and a half minutes left to go. Now this is the move that Halenka oh. took time over. And another rest coming here for Ramon. Should yeah, I'm Bonke. not totally sure because... Uh, ah, yeah. Yeah, it is okay. Because uh, Sebastian was a lot taller and he could stay on the uh, lower big hold, but he could rest anyway with the left foot hold, so it's okay. Ramon using all of his eight minutes here. He's moving into his seventh one now. But he's definitely not liking uh, this sloper for a rest as much as Sebastian did. Crowd right behind the 33 year old Spaniard as he's ascending to the sky here. On move number 49. Five away. Oh. Could it be the first top in this final? It's a good start there from Ramon Julien Piblonquet. He will accept yeah. the marker here. Looking for a European grant. One move away, maybe. Oh, he had his hand on it. <laughs> yeah, he it's just a... come short. Italy. And it's back, it's coming. 53 plus was his score. Stefano Gisolfi, winner in Wuzhang last, last year in that extraordinary World Cup down there in China. Also the start of Ninja Warrior as well, under that fantastic viral vid. <laughs> It'll be interesting if he does it again. <laughs> he won a lot of fans on, on social media for that last year. Yeah. And he also won a lot of fans for his first victory last year in Wuzhang as well. Yeah. One World Cup to his name. Finalist in Mokpo and in Imst and in Kron and in Haiyang as well. Yeah, so Stefano is also a really good friend of mine and uh, I wish him really all the best. Uh, we competed in a lot of competitions together as well. In the youth comps, uh, on the World Cups, senior World Cups. Uh, so I know him since the very beginning of the big comps. As you can see. Ramp back to the rapids. They're on the road. Stand on the road. They're stopping traffic. <laughs> They're stopping traffic. They're not letting anybody down here because everybody's in the middle of the road watching the climbing. Yeah. <laughs> on this Sunday night in July, it's been lovely here all weekend. But in the last few years here in Chamonix, they've, they've struggled with weather, bad weather here. And Briançon as well next week. Hopefully the lightning stays away this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, last year was crazy actually. All the all the World Cups were actually on the finals. It was raining as hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even in Gijon, but the uh, luckily there was a roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. But an hour before the start, there was a massive thunderstorm in yeah. Gijon, yeah. and the humidity in the place yeah. round up because of the storm as well. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the lights uh, went off in Gijon they before did, the finals. We had a, we had a power cut <laughs> 20 minutes before going, going live. It was, uh, it was quite exciting. Yeah, last year it uh, just the nature wanted to cancel every cup. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes down. Yeah, uh, Stefano is climbing a lot slower than uh, 
I, I mean, maybe not to as Ramon, but uh, I would say like Sebastian climbed really, really fast. He walked to the Voltopia sign there in maybe two or three minutes. Like. Well, that's how fun it is. Look, they're watching from the balconies in the hotel. Look at this. <laughs> get down here. Get down here. Never mind saying at the end of the lap of luxury. Come on down. We're free. Oh, they're giving us a wave as well. You're money for nothing and your kids are free down here. <laughs> they probably have a better view now. <laughs> the, the crowd is so thick, so they probably can. Okay. It's Alfie, 21 years of age, the one number nine, seventh in the overall last year, 42 in his semi final, 36 plus, and a 37 in qualifying. Consistent performer of the last 12 months. And, what, and I say this time and time again that's the way it needs to go. That's where Ramon got to, that's where Sebastian got to as well, the top of your screen. I say this time and time again about the athletes in this sport. A lot of them have a lot of time for you. They're happy to give time to their fans, give time to press. It's a joy to work on all the uh, IFSC circuit and I really do enjoy the competition. And the sport. Oh! What a mistake. With a very, very serious pose on his picture, the 23 year old from Innsbruck. I think he's in a really good shape, so. Uh, I wish you all the best. Yes, got to be Jakob, here we go. So what could this white knight of Innsbruck do? Multiple 13 World Cups to his name, 2012 World Champion, winner in Haiyang and Mokpo last year. I seem to recall that final in Mokpo, I was there with your good self, and that was when the weather got the better of everybody that day, doesn't it? Yeah. Jakob started out climbing in drizzle, and everybody else climbed in heavy rain, if I, I seem to recall, and he had the best of the conditions and won. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that competitions outside are really good, but Sometimes, uh, <laughs> if it comes in South Korea in October, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it it can depend a lot on the. It can get really hot over the day, or it starts raining and the humidity comes. It's not the same for everybody, but yeah, it's. These conditions right now, like, you regard as perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. Everybody has the same condition, and uh, it's really good to watch for sure. Uh, the qualifiers the yesterday, though, the temperature ramped up hotter and hotter throughout the day, and that must be difficult. When you climb at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. compared to you climb at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah, it, it definitely must be so difficult. It definitely makes a difference. As I know, I was climbing uh, the first route quite in the morning still, and then. The, because it was so many competitors, the second I was climbing in, uh, yeah, just a lot hotter, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the temperature here on uh, Saturday was uh, 32 degrees Celsius, so... Been boiling here all weekend. Yeah. So then, Jakob, what can you do? 13-time World Cup winner, world title winner, world champion of in Paris in 2012. We're back in Paris next year for the World Championship. Back at the Bercy Arena in 2016. Oh, Jakob took a slightly different Vita here. I hope this doesn't cost him too much power. Ah, but he sold it okay, yeah. Ah, he's, he looks relaxed. Got Anna's the time as well. That's the target he's reaching right now. Ramon Julian people on case 53 plus is what leads. Alenke, 52, second place. Kisolfi, 38. You can probably bet that's going to be beaten by at least one of the next few climbers. The one from the top two, though, they have the best of the conditions. Yeah. But it is perfect. There's no excuses here, Domin, is there? No. I would say today is perfect, so no excuses for sure. 
It's a proper competition, I would say. And the best man wins. Yeah, Jakub is taking his time. I know him. He also sometimes uh, always like likes to take a rest like this. I probably he tries to calm himself down and yeah, as me watch the moves before him and tries to get like in the right mood, you know. And uh, yeah. So it's halfway through his allotted time. And around move 32 to 35 right now. Uh, oh, and you're, not, you're not liking this. No, no, no. He's not really. Yeah, uh, he's. He did it like the the hardest possible way. He was he was didn't like the position, and he became unsure of himself. So this cost him a lot of power. Thing. Hopefully he can rest on, on the edge. If he keeps it together. Austrian team right behind my, myself and Dominic in this climbers pen that they've put up and dream of goals! Whoa. Adam Andre hasn't been too well the last couple of weeks since he come back from China. But yeah, Adam is an amazing climber, so I wouldn't be surprised if he tops the route. So. One of the things that a lot of people enjoy watching yeah. Adam Andre is he, he doesn't hang around, does he? He, yeah. he? he just gets on with it, sees the route, yeah. sees the beta, and goes. Yeah. Yeah. If Adam is in the zone, nothing can stop him. It's, <laughs> it's amazing to watch. Never, never second guesses himself. No. He always no. commits. Yeah. I've, I've never seen such a focus. <laughs> Andre, world number two, as I mentioned, made six of the nine finals last year. Disappointment here in Chamonix last year. Yeah, I know. Call, so I many. Him, uh, I seem to recall him kicking the wall last year uh, in the qualifiers, in annoyance. Yeah, but it's just really unfortunate what happened to him. It's uh, I wouldn't imagine myself like if that would happen to me. I would probably act the same. Um, and last year, yeah, he had. He had actually he had a good season, like winning two both world championships. But he had like in the lead, he had really ups and downs because. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely right. I'm seeing it. It was ninth in Haiyang, yeah, twenty seventh in Chamonix, yeah, eighth in Briançon, yeah. Then, so the, of course, Briançon final didn't, didn't happen. So he would have made the final, yeah, but yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah. Then went to Ims, won. Yeah. Went went to Munich for the Bouldering World uh, World Championship, won. won. Yeah. Went to Gijon three weeks later, won. <laughs> won. Then he went up to. Eight. Asia, yeah. struggled for two weeks, came off the wall after four moves in or something along those yeah. lines, the semi-final in Hayak, and then goes to Inzai, <laughs> and flashes Sachi Yama on his home trial. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but I, I think oh, he also took the Jak Jakob's beta. Maybe they watched together this, but this is definitely not the easiest, I think. Um, yeah, uh, I wanted to say before that um, Adam takes a lot of risks, so maybe this is also the, the problem why there is like so much difference between his results, you know. Uh, he goes for all or nothing. <laughs> and when he goes for all, it's, uh, I tell you what, I it's wanna, amazing to watch. I, I wouldn't would like, like to sit, sit next to him on a blackjack table and all that. <laughs> he gambles, he gambles. <laughs> yeah. He for sure gambles. But this is, yeah, this is impressive to watch. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, Boulder was in Munich. Yes, the history maker, Adam Andre. For sure. Within three weeks, he won the World Bouldering title and the World League title. I tell you what, it'll be one hell of a performance if he, if he repeats that in Paris in, in 15 months' time. Uh, Jakob and Adam totally watched the route together because they are climbing the same. But the position, this position here, suits Adam a lot more. Jakob was struggling out here. Just to remind you, Adam Andra has been training that much for the last two weeks since coming back from China for the Bouldering World Cup. Was, was quite ill. With, with, with sickness, and he hasn't been training that well. He still feels he's not 100%. Yeah, but he looks fine for. I mean. <laughs> Up, up to here. Ah, okay. This move is hard. Okay. 50 
two, fifty-three plus. I did beg your pardon. Is what the target is. Ramon Julian Pivonke. If he matches it, he takes the lead by the comeback rule. Are having a better climb in the semi-final. Oh, wow. <laughs> there was a massive gasp of air then in the whole audience. <laughs> it's amazing as I'm watching all the climbers now and Sebastian before it's like Sebastian would use it was using different holes or something. It's crazy. Sebastian was walking for the route. It's crazy. Oh, well, you were saying at the start you were a bit worried that we could have about five, six tops here because yeah. you thought it was just too easy, but it's just yeah. Proof that everybody's taking a different route. No. And Helen could make, not found the right one to start. Yeah, Sebastian was doing really, really well. Now then, Andre, well. here we go again. Adam Andre, not far away now. He's searching for a European title. He oh. wants something else for his mantelpiece. Oh, no. He didn't try to match. Gautier Super now is the next climber out. Uh, it was horrible to watch. Yeah, it was horrible, yeah. It was. Sure. Gautier Super last year in Mopo, in Wujang, and in, in Zai made his way about 10, 15 moves on the wall and just either slip, lose concentration, or, or an earthquake would happen or something along those sorts, and, and it, would just, it would just come off the wall. It was just nothing was happening for him that day, yeah. those three World Cups. And I said to him, and I said, you are quality climb, just put it behind you. It's just bad luck that you've had. Yeah. But it was definitely a tour to Asia for, to, to forget for Gotti and Super. No, it's crazy how much bad luck he got last year. It's, <laughs> it's, ti it's time for him that he shows what he's capable of, yeah, for sure. Adam Andre fans, disappointment for you guys. He's in second place. 52 plus is what the judges have given him. One behind Ramon Julian P. Blanquet. The Spaniard leads. Three climbs to go. As Gordia Super is carried here by a wave of emotion from this crowd. Yeah, I just wanted to say Gautier is climbing really, really fast and it's really good if, you, if you're climbing fast and if you're doing everything right, but sometimes it can cost you. Superb crowd here, the town square here in Chamonix. Oh, it's amazing. Some of them camped out from three this afternoon to get the best seats in the can of the house. Some of them were on their deck chairs, some people bringing picnics. <laughs> Somebody's brought half their own living room by the looks of things. <laughs> Now then. He's sexy and he's loyal. Got 24-year-old, the world number eight. Eight is 2014. In the world overall, and then look, the runner results from Gijon to Kron, 8th in Gijon, 8th in Mokpo, 8th in Mujan, 8th in Inzai, 8th in Kron. I've made all the finals, we give him that. Just couldn't have to fall him in finals, but he wants to put that year behind him. Yeah, he's doing a really good job right now. Everything looks under control for sure. Maybe he's slightly unsure of himself here, but... That's a run, move 44, 45 now. He's gone! Oh. He's gone! Romain de Grange, the current European champion, 
Juste temps. Here we go. Permettre de rentrer dans le rythme de la voix. Une ovation pour Romain Desgranges. C'est vrai que là, tu pourrais mettre un petit Jean-Jacques Goldman. Il aimerait bien. Il est fou amoureux. Jean-Jacques Goldman. France, we've got a good, good following here for this final. Ellen Jenico still to come in the women's final. Alors, in the bottom, well, I we reckon in around about 20 or so minutes' time. It's going to be a late one here. Uh, Tonight in Germany. Especially after we do all the interviews and afterwards we could be hitting the witching hour at midnight by the time we finish. Voilà. Au moins, si, même si vous ne criez pas tous en même temps, mais au moins la droite au début, la gauche après, le, le fond, mais vous ne le lâchez pas. Vous le poussez. On s'est rendu compte qu'elle était exigeante, cette voix. Ça peut lui correspondre complètement. Voilà pourquoi on voudrait que... Fourth flash in high hand, fifth here in Xiaomi, second in Bionso, fourth in Imso, seventh in Gizho, third in Mokpo, third in Wujang, seventh in Inzo, seventh in Korn. 49 plus in his semi-final, he topped out on one qualifying route and has a 42 plus on the other. He tops out here, he could reclaim his European crown and we'll get the monkey off his back. He will pick up a World Cup crown along with it. Two for the price of one here in Xiaomi. Beaucoup de résistance. Allez, c'est maintenant la grande lâche s'il vous plaît. Allez, sur le streaming, prenez-en plein les yeux. C'est encore un championnat d'Europe et une Coupe du Monde. S'il nous refait le même coup gagné il y a deux ans. Oh oui, ça, ça va aider tout ça. Allez, tapez dans les mains, Chamonix, tout le monde. Sur Jean-Jacques wow. Goldman. Il adore grimper sur Goldman, allez. Il va nous la donner, cette victoire. Oh, risky move here, risky move, for sure. Risky, that one? Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Because, <laughs> uh, for the instant, he he couldn't really see the, the hold on the structure. I'm definite about that. And he just went for it, but it's not a uh, Ramon that I know. Maybe, maybe this is the day that he's risking it all, so. Maybe it pays off. Maybe, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, 32 now. Yeah. Because I know that he was always like a little bit stressed every time and he never did his best. And maybe today he's relaxed. So. Roll the dice. Looking for a double sex, maybe. Nothing to lose. He climbed well in the semi final. Yeah. To come out in second place. Well. The crowd really spurring on the 32-year-old Frenchman. I tell you what, there'll be party tonight if he finds the top here. <laughs> Everybody's having a Monday off work in Germany. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's really committed. He's really committed. Oh, then has he got himself a stock here? What a good rest point. Dominic's not in his head, he's, like, he's liking his action at the moment. <laughs> so drop a body strength from the 32. Yeah, he over. looks really good. He just needs to keep calm and finish off as he, he should. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, still looks fine, still looks fine. Looking fine, looking good, the crowd wow. carrying him to the sky here on a wave of emotion. Romain de Grange has never won a World Cup. Whoa. He's got to stay calm. Not out taken so, but he's uh. got the top one in peace. Dimitri Vakranyov, who climbed superb. Fifth in Chiamani 2013. He's never made the podium. But he has won World Youth Championships and European Youth Championships. But we also have to, to say that he he's like on two comps per year. And this is also, well, I mean... Exactly, I'm just looking at his record for the last 12 months. 10th yeah. in Germany, 13th yeah. in Beyond Son, 26th in the World Championship. That's it. Yeah. Didn't think about any others. And I... I blew the semi-finalists away earlier today. I know that he's uh, lacking for sure some experience. If, if he would get more competitions, he would be... <laughs>
like doing really, really well. So remain the Granges, reign as European champion is going to be over. Who will take his place? It's either Laurent or Julien de Blanquet. He went second in this competition. It was light when it he started. <laughs> <laughs> just goes to prove sometimes you go out early in finals and you can still win yeah for sure I mean you have fresh holds you you have no feedback you go out you know that you have nothing to lose I mean the uh, the the crowd is cheering for you the most because they don't know the route yet, they're not bored. They're, they, I mean, yeah, of course, after the last, the, the route starts to get boring. The first half of the route starts to get boring when, like, seven competitors, eight competitors go over the route. So, uh, for sure, you get a special, special atmosphere, and it's really good to climb like this. And. <laughs> Yeah, for sure it's not uh, bad to climb the first in the finals. Two minutes down for Dimitri. It's very much a circumspective climb right now. Very patient. He's only on what, hole move 19 right now? Heading up to 20. Yeah, he's, uh, he has like too much endurance and he can take time, but uh, let's hope that won't cost him, that he won't take too much time and then rush on the end. Just reminds you of course, if you're new to league climbing, it's eight minutes. Each climber will have to try and find the top of this orange route. Oh, <laughs> a little, little bit of a nervous move there from... Yeah, he wasn't really trying, um, trusting the, the feature. And he rather jumped for. Germany, who have been magnificent hosts here this weekend uh, once more. Oh, this, is, this is not good, Dom. This is not good. I can't watch this. It's not good right now. He needs to recover. Uh, the Russian. He's struggling here. And he uh, may have got recovered while he's moving his footing. Oh my god. He needs oh to stir my... the ship here. Oh it's my rocking. god. It can't be more wrong than this. It's going to be very wrong. This going to be game over very shortly. It's going to be game over. Uh... It is. Start the car. Launch the pedalos. It's all over. Ramon Julian P. Blanquet is the champion of Europe. There's confirmation on your screen. Ramon de Grange, a good defense of his <laughs> European title. Ramon qui gagne, Adam deuxième et Sébastien première, premier podium de sa carrière.